Hey everybody and welcome to another painting video. Uh, today I am working on this guy. This is, uh, I think it's called Rillier Rising. This is from the Cthulhu Dead May Die Kickstarter. This was like the big um, add-on that you could get in that set. Uh, you can still find them on eBay if you look at, if you see this and you think, I must have this. Uh, it is definitely available to be had, but I am going to try to uh, try to document my progress on this from start to finish. And so far, I have done absolutely nothing with this aside from taking it out of its package. So uh, I have looked it over a little bit. This is a surprisingly nice casting. Uh, what is interesting about it is this has actually been assembled to a certain extent. The only thing that's not assembled is the wings. There are wings that go on the back, here and here, and I am not probably not going to do that at all until I get to the end of the project. So um, I'm going to leave it as is for now. Uh, as you can see, I have mounted this on a uh, Lazy Susan. And that is so that I don't actually have to hold it very much. Uh, I don't want to be rubbing the paint off with something this heavy. And it is not as heavy as you think because it's hollow. Uh, and it's vinyl. So again, not as heavy as you might expect. But even so, if I was constantly having to, you know, hold on to it, paint was going to get lost. So rather than have that, I put it on this little contraption which allows me to get to all elements of it without having to really do anything uh, in order, you know, in terms of touching it. Uh, I do need to do some cleanup. Not a lot, surprisingly. Um, there are some little uh, bits of uh, mold line on the edges of the wings, but even these are not bad. Obviously, the, this this side of it, I don't have to worry about. Uh, this, I have not really been able to find anything resembling mold lines, but there are some uh, places where it was assembled. There's a little gap here that needs to get filled. And let's see if you can see that there. So right down here towards the bottom, you should be able to see that, there is a, a pretty significant gap. It won't be hard to fill, but it's down there. Um, and I th think that's it. I think that's all there is to this in terms of prepping. Oh no, I'm sorry. Um, there are some lines back here. I, I think it's entirely possible that once this is painted, especially considering the wings go down right here, that once it's painted, that it would be fine. Um, but I may, I may throw some putty in there. Anyway, but that's it. I'd like for in terms of what I know right now, having done nothing else and just looked it over, I think that's all I need to do in order to get this ready. So um, I'm going to sort of retool my uh, lights and my camera. Uh, so that I can actually get to work on this and maybe show you some of the things that I'm going to do. So I'll be back. All right, I think the first thing I'm going to tackle here is this gap. It's the thing that is the most sort of egregious when I look at this. And I'm just going to be using some Liquitex uh, natural sand gel. And I think that when, it, when this dries up, the texture is going to be perfect for that application. I'm a little concerned because it's such a big gap, it's very deep, and I, I'm, I'm going to try to just dab it on so that it will sort of bridge the gap, literally bridge the gap. I don't want to, I don't, I don't necessarily want it to use up enough to fill in all of the space underneath there. Luckily, this stuff dries very tough. So I'm not really concerned about it like falling in or anything. Let me take a brush. Spread this out a little bit. 
kind of feather it. It will shrink a little, which is actually good if the uh, any kind of remaining brush strokes should minimize in the kind of shrinkage process. All right, that's looking pretty good. I'm always concerned about leaving too many like weird tool marks in there. That's good. There's a little bit more down here. I think I'll just use the brush. Ooh, that gap's a little bit bigger. This thing is just so big. It, uh, this is probably, I gotta think about it, but I do believe this is the largest model I have ever painted. Uh, I used to do vinyl model kits back in the 90s. You know, superheroes and stuff. I did a Judge Dredd. I did a Batman. I did an ABC War Robot from the Judge Dredd series. Uh, I think I did Judge Anderson. Boy, now that you think about it, I did a lot of Judge Dredd related figures. Uh, but they were a lot of fun, but they weren't this big. They were definitely not this big. All right, so I don't mind if any of that sand texture shows up on these rocks and stuff. It's just perfectly fine there. I just don't want the brush strokes. Sand texture good, brush strokes bad. All right, and yeah, there's a little bit more back here. Let me see if I can show you. Yeah, there you go. Like I said, this does cure out pretty tough. So I'm not going to be worried about it um, cracking or breaking or anything like that. maybe leave that because he's he's pushing on these things let's see if we can see that yeah see he's he's pushing on them well he's pushing on this one anyway maybe it will fill that one that'll be all right I'm starting to think that like if it looked like he was actually pushing these over then it would make sense for there to be a gap there but no they look like they're just sitting there kind of at a weird angle so an unspeakably weird angle I don't know okay let me show you what I'm looking at here now oh, where is it there it is so this has, that has an obvious gap. I don't know that I, because it just looks like that piece is just sitting on those rocks there and I think I'm going to leave it. I think that's okay. Is it okay? I think it's okay. I think that's fine. All right. Let me think about some of the other stuff, reset the camera, I'll be right back. Okay, so the next thing I want to tackle is uh, this little connection point here between uh, the head and shoulders area and the torso and arm. There is uh, a minor gap running through there. I say minor, but if this were a regular miniature, that would be massive. Uh, I'm going to be using uh, Vallejo Plastic Putty, which I've been using more and more. I find it to be a very normally easy thing to use if the uh, tip hasn't dried out, which this has. There we go. 
So I am actually just going to squirt this in there and spread it. And that should be enough for there. And then I'll take my brush and smooth that out. Just want to make sure the brush is damp. I'm just trying to make sure that this doesn't fill in all the detail where it kind of got all over everything. This stuff also dries really fast. I mean, not like super glue fast, but faster than you'd expect for uh, air, an air dry putty. And uh, again, it also is pretty sturdy. Yeah, I think that's all I need there. What about the backside? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do these areas here and here because it won't take long. Again, with a piece this size, uh, it, it makes doing this stuff pretty easy. All right. So I want to just make sure that it's going into that gap. And then feather it out. Now this doesn't have sand texture, so I don't have to worry about that. I just need to worry about whether or not it's filling in detail. But if I smooth it out to be very thin everywhere but that gap, that should be fine. Again, this stuff also shrinks slightly, so it should Or it shouldn't it shouldn't uh, fill in any detail if I smooth it out like that same thing here looking pretty good I am now going to work on the wings so the wings really don't have much but if you look close enough let me see if I can get this to focus hello no there we go uh, there is a line down this edge here. You can just about see it there. Yeah. A uh, little exacto work should take care of that. Maybe a little sandpaper. Shouldn't take very long, but I'm just going to do that off camera because it's not a big deal. And then uh, I'm going to wait for all that to dry. I'll come back and hit it with some primer, which might actually take a while. So uh, because I put on so much of the sand gel I figured it was going to take a, an extra amount of time to cure out so uh, this is actually now tomorrow so it's been a full 24-ish uh, hours since I last touched this and since you can see as it's all white in here that is still not cured out but it's fine it will eventually cure out uh, the surface is going to be dry enough that I can paint over it and I'm not really going to touch that area for quite a while anyway so I'm gonna go ahead and start priming today I'm gonna be using my Grex XGI Genesis because it's got a big big container there uh, this I bought this airbrush because it comes with multiple sizes. You can, there's actually four different sizes you can swap it out to. All I've got is the 0.2 and 0.3 uh, 
uh, millimeter tips. I don't have the 0.5 or 7, which either one of those would be better than this, but this won't be bad. I haven't used it in a while though, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure how it's going to behave. Seems okay. I was getting a little spitting there at the beginning. I'll just keep a uh, keep a cloth handy to clean the tip. At some point, I am going to need to kind of flip this upside down and get a look at underneath. Hmm. In case I forgot to mention it, this is actually uh, Steinle Res from Badger, their primer. It's my favorite primer, hands down. As far as I'm concerned, nothing else is worthwhile. Getting under those tentacles is something. And behind. Oop. Got a new bottle. Oh, gotta go find the new paint. So I found my primer, as you can see. <laughs> uh, but I also, while I was priming this, I found uh, this weird little gap where the arm comes onto the shoulder. And it's, it's a little heinous. I, I don't know, when the wing's on, you might not even see it at all, but I can't not do something about it. So... I've mixed up some green stuff and I'm just gonna wedge it in there at the moment I think I need a little more it's funny because on the front side it's not there at all it's not a problem it goes on the way it should but on this side it's pretty bad. Okay, this is just to get it firmly inside there. This is not for final texture or anything. And in fact, I need to go find something to use for texturing this. Uh, actually, this 
this isn't again not texturing this is just more smoothing this is a uh, um, silicone shaper now it's so cold in here that the, uh, the putty is way too hard let's use the back end Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go find something. I'm gonna go find something to, to texture this with, and then, uh, and then I'll be back. All right, let me try this. I found a rock. <laughs> um, it's got a kind of a sharpish edge, and it should provide a little bit more natural a surface, maybe. I mean, I'll grab whatever I can when I'm trying to do something like this. Well, I think that's going to be okay. Um, I mean, truthfully, I won't know until I get primer back over that. And now I'm going to let everything dry. I'm going to let that set. That's going to take overnight. Um, and then I will get to painting. So I think I'm going to wrap up this video. We'll call this sort of the introductory video for today. So I guess we'll just wrap this up here. Uh, I think we've done all of our preliminary stuff and this can just be our introductory video for this series, which will, I'm guessing, be at least two more videos, but we'll see. I won't know for sure until uh, I really get to painting on the thing. So that's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching and I will talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.